What's going on guys? This is Empty Box, back with more Tokyo Extreme Racer 3, and this time we're going to start on Tokyo Shinkanjo section. And, well, let's start off with the tuning chop. I think we unlocked some extra parts, and I can't remember if I already put them on the car after the last section, so we'll just double check here really quickly. As well as we're going to put some uh, arrow bits on here because we got the dough now. Oh, actually, let's make sure we get our tires first. Performance before cosmetics. Faux show. Before I forget. Uh, there's right there. Let's, uh, move the license plate, just because why not. But uh, more importantly, there is a wanderer in one of these sections that requires you to have a different headlight. Which actually, you know what? That <laughs> I don't mind mind this satellite style, but uh, why why would you get carbon? I I don't know. Just uh, really goofy. Yeah, I'd like to spend uh, three thousand dollars on this uh, carbon carbon headlight. Uh, yeah. Makes me go extra fast. Mm -hmm. So, gotta say I'm not really a fan of uh, any of these bumpers, to be entirely honest. So, 154. Again, performance, performance. Make all of the things carbon. All of them. Ooh, that's that's an expensive one kilo of weight reduction. We'll we'll stay with the FRP parts on that. That's just gonna make the car heavier. You know, again, the uh, the stock parts. The stock parts are lighter, man. Well, they're not lighter, but they just look better. I know some people are like, If you're gonna put the bits on the car, why not do the cool looking stuff in the things? Because they don't look cool. But this one's got like speed holes on the back going on, so... You know what, we'll go with that. And, and we're already got the mismatch theme going on here. Now, putting the spoiler on the car is gonna make the car heavier. But, you know... Downforce. Downforce. And of course, we're going to leave the car horribly mismatched just for uh, shenanigans and to drive people crazy. So we have cut off quite a significant amount of weight there, I think, maybe, probably. But uh, we've also made our car look absolutely ridiculous. So let's go racing. We're going to start on the quack. The counterclockwise loop. Easy for me to say. So there is our first victim of the night. Driving an MX-5 sucks to be you because this is not a good place to be driving an MX-5. This isn't even like the super high speed stuff yet. This is just like the first taste of, you know, straight on high speed running. Going on here. So, Yellow Angel from Diamond Image. Should be nothing more than a pushover. And this this on-ramp thing here is absolutely deadly. It is shenanigans. Because it basically goes down to a lane and a half and three quarters, basically. Which means that if there's traffic exiting the highway, it's kind of like, uh, there's really nowhere to go. So that's one of those places that's really good to uh, race against the AI when you get up to like a team leader or a boss the difficulty goes up a little bit because then you can kind of use that area to your advantage. And, uh, you know, have a better chance of that. So, on to the next victim. Alright, and here we have Blue Giant driving another 180SX. At least he's got a good taste in cars. Although, his car's all one color, therefore it's clearly inferior because multicolored Mix and match two-tone paint job is best paint job, of course. So let's go ahead and 
smoke this guy here. Another one from Team Wind Stars. Which, if I remember correctly, the the backstory on Team Wind Stars is apparently they started after someone. Someone in someone's former team died, and then they started a new team, and then that guy found like other people who had similar background experiences, and they formed a racing team or something like that. If I remember correctly, some sort of weird goofy thing. Sometimes backstories are interesting. Sometimes they're kind of like, eh. Come on now, where's the shenanigan right? So onwards to the next guy. Looks like we got Reckless Train, another Team Wind Stars driver. And another guy who is going to give us his money. Whether or not he likes it, he will be depositing some uh, credits into my wallet here. The good news is, seeing how we've already cleared out a fair few of these Team Windstars guys, we should actually be pretty close to the team leader here. throughout this section we should be able to actually kind of power through really quickly because we do have a couple teams already kind of worn down a little bit. And we should be able to move on to another city. High speed right hander. Fun corner right there. One of the best corners in the game in my opinion. So let's go ahead and catch up to the next one. Alright here's our next victim and actually I do believe our first GTR of the game, our magic. Driving an R32, it looks like, with a goofy spoiler. Not, not sure what's going on there, but uh, yeah. It's definitely some sort of design. I don't care if he's got GTR or not, we got the Almighty 180SX, so we're gonna just blast off here. This guy doesn't have a chance. It's not like GTRs are fast or anything like that. We all know that. Yeah, I mean, they, they only have 276 horsepower, right? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, know what I mean, know what I mean. They're even easier to beat when the driver's a complete moron who drives into the back of a yellow van like that. So, give me your money, chump. Bring on your team leader. Must be more. On to the next victim. All right, looks like we got an S15 here, yellow flare, who's driving a yellow greenish car. Eh. Apparently, whoever made the the colors in this game was kind of like a little colorblind, or just trying to get too too cute and creative with it. Like, why not just give the guy named Yellow a yellow car like you would expect? Or why why like? Give him sort of like that illusion B color. You, know, you got a little bit of green mixed in there, yeah? It's like, eh, come on now. I mean, I know it's a stock color on the S15, but still, you know, it, it works. It's yellow. Come on now. But hey, as I've said multiple times already, his money spins exactly the same, so. Just go ahead and hand that on over. Bring out your team leader for crying out loud because you guys all suck. You're a bunch of chumps. So deal with it. And there's his team leader. Apparently, apparently he heard me. And this guy's name, pretty cool. Wolf Requiem. Again. What do I gotta do to get a cool name? So let's turn the turbo boost on here. He is, uh... Could have been faster than the rest of his team. Turn that off. Save the uh, temperature. Uh, getting close to the wall there. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Now the good thing about this section, there is a relative abundance of pit pit areas. It is pretty easy to just duck on in and cool the car off when needed and all that. So anyways, let's go ahead and try and keep the wind combo going. Oh, we got a fresh opponent redraw. 
few more, so we'll just go ahead and speed on up here. Catch up to him the old manual way. Forget the jump cuts here, because it won't take that long. But a, a lot of people have been asking about the recent news that there's going to be a new game in this series, uh, at least in Japan, and it's going to be a mobile game. And uh, just that way it's, you know, on video here. Uh, yeah, it, it's a mobile game coming out in Japan, and therefore I do not care one bit. Like, it's just like, I don't speak Japanese. I don't play mobile games. I don't have a need for a mobile game from Japan. Uh, you know, regardless of if it's a series that I greatly enjoy playing. Because, well, I mean, duh. It's a mobile game as well as in a language I don't even speak. And there's no indications that it's going to be uh, translated into English either, as far as I know. So, I would really like to see, you know, the series come back properly. Even if I don't have a current generation console. Um, currently, at least. But, you know, it's just one of those things, though, where... I don't know. I feel like there's a great gameplay mechanic here with the whole, you know, SP meter and things like that, but it's just like, nobody makes racing games anymore. Which, you know, is very disappointing, but that's just kind of how the market is, and, and that's that. And seeing how I kind of got a conversation going on here, I'll just do it manually. Just drive on up to him. But, you know, it, it'd be cool to see, but I'm actually kind of surprised that nobody really used the same type of mechanic or really did anything along the same lines. Because, you know, back in the early 2000s with the whole Fast and the Furious craze and, you know, all that, where, you know, all of a sudden, you know, these tuned-up cars took off and they were all over the place. They were in movies and everything. And people went crazy for them. We had tons of racing games, the Need for Speed games went from racing exotics to racing freaking Honda Civics. And here's Agrol Itsuki. Because uh, this guy's name is because he goes to a uh, shop and he brings back Agrols. That's how he got his name. Maybe that's what I need to do. I need to go get Agrols for people. But, uh, anyways, you know, it, it's kind of like one of those things where it still stayed like just general racing games, whereas I think this game and what makes the Tokyo Extreme Racer series unique is the gameplay mechanic of the SP meter, as well as, I think one of the best parts is the fact that you always kind of have that thing going on where you're always saving up for the next part, because you know you need the next part because the boss battles do difficulty spike like crazy in this game. So it's kind of always like the beginning of a Gran Turismo or a Forza game where you're always like, okay, do I really need that? You know, or, or can I just go ahead and save my money because it's not going to matter that much and I can get something more useful? And here's another team leader. Team leader from Diamond Image. Lightning Shift something. I couldn't read it. Uh, Lightning Shift Takuya. And time for the turbo boost. That way we can hopefully defeat this guy before we get to the next opponent. Ah. And our car is smoking. You can see that in the mirror. That is generally not good. Oh, there is a pit area up here, so let's go ahead and turn the pit the, the boost on even further. We're gonna push it to the limit! Yeah! It's 157 miles an hour. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we have overheated that puppy. We're going into this section here where I know the AI is going to bin it. So let's turn that boost back on, see if it helps us a little bit, but... I think she done about to blow up here. So that's two out of the three teams done here. As well as one incredibly hot engine. Yep, this is how much slower you are when you overheat your engine in this game. I, I have it floored right now. It is... yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip this guy, hop back into the pit area, and we'll try and keep our wind combo rolling here. So, rejoin you guys in just a moment. No! No! Yeah, 
you know, I never understood why sometimes you actually get challenged by other drivers and sometimes it never happens. It's like, it's supposed to be a mechanic in the game, but... No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Stop! It's supposed to be a mechanic in the game, but, like, it never works consistently enough to even bother. So it's easier to just, to, like, run up behind someone at 150 miles an hour. No! I'm not buying someone at 150 miles an hour and just smashing in the back end on the brakes, you know, press the R2 button and, and be done. I swear to God, if you challenge me one more time, I'm going to throw this controller. Oh! I mean, he wasn't even close! <laughs> he wasn't even close that time! Like, he was... He wasn't even in the rearview mirror! I mean... What, <laughs> what? What is this? What is this? Come on now. <laughs> if we miss the pit area because of this guy turning us into autopilot, like, not gonna be happy. I. <laughs> 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 the game's just trolling me at this point. I'm not even joking. There's the pit area. I swear to goodness. I swear to goodness if you even think about it. There we go. Silly game. Silly game. Alright, so we have the entirety of Team Highway Outlaw, who uh, races on the same section on the CCL. And then we have the other direction, which is the CWL. But we're sticking with the uh, CCL here. And that should cool the car off, and we should be good to go back to racing, as well as uh, hopefully no longer be trolled by that guy and his little RX-7. Yep, temperatures are back. Back into the safe zone. Here's this guy. You know what? Oh, what? Now you now you don't want to race me? Is that what's going on here? You don't want to race me now? All of a sudden? So may may this beating be swift. This guy deserves it. Be trolling like that. Talk smack, get wrecked. Come on now. All that over a guy who had no chance at all. No chance. What a bunch of shenanigans. What a bunch of shenanigans. Well, in other words, we can really duel with the cooling upgrade. That'd be really handy right about now. So on to the next guy. All right, here's our next victim, and I do definitely mean victim. The Totem Pole, racing the almighty Isuzu Vitacross. Otherwise known as the most random car ever put into any racing game ever. Why? Why is that a thing? First of all, why did Isuzu ever even dare make that thing? But second of all, why is Isuzu even in a racing game, period? I mean, Isuzu. As well as, why the Isuzu Vitacross in a racing game ever? I mean, there is no good reason for any of this. Well, then again, I'm pretty sure someone's going to say there is a very good reason because, you know, whatever Japanese anime or something like that, some sort of reference that I'm missing that totally makes the Zuzu Via Cross a perfectly good car to place into this game. That's going to be how it's going. On to the next victim. All right, looks like we got Spiral. Driving an FTO for Team Outlaw, or Highway Outlaw, which I can't remember what those guys, what their thing is. I think they're, no, actually I remember what it is. They're all a bunch of douchebags. That's what it is. And we'll go ahead and just boost the snot out of this one because there's a pit area up at the end of this section. And there's no opponents within a reasonable distance other than that green guy that we've already defeated, so might as well. Keep it buried and go fast. Hopefully he'll uh, 
smash into that, and well, nope, we're not gonna beat him by the pit area. Bummer. So we'll turn the boost off. Doesn't really matter at this point. But there's an easy win. These guys are like mobile ATMs. So I'm gonna go duck into the pit area, that way we can keep the win combo going, because we got a 1.5 multiplier going. That's always nice. So on to the next guy. Alright, just for those of you guys who are curious, this is how you find out who is what and all that. So Highway Outlaw, aptly named Highway Outlaw, this is a team comprised of only foreigners. Their car models are all over the map, but they are united in their rough racing. They are also famous for their vengefulness, and highway racers consider them a nuisance because once they lose, they want rematches until they win. They have considerable influence on the shrinkage zone. And then if you uh, go in here, you also get a more detailed biography of uh, people that you've already raced. This guy, he's a secret police in the Eastern European country. Oh no. And this guy, he, he hates him or something like that. And then this guy hates that guy. And on and on and on and on and on. And everybody hates themselves. As well as uh, their fellow teammates. But they get along because they drive like a bunch of douches and smash into cars and things like that, as well as troll people by challenging them constantly when they just want to get to the friggin' pit area. As well as, you got guys like this who run those white taillights, so you always think the car's going in the wrong direction. But alas, no, he's just a douchebag who has white taillights on the back of his car. Hey, seriously, I hate those. I hate those. I'm pretty sure those are not legal. <laughs> but, hey, who cares about such minor details in a video game, right? Man, it looks like we're not going to get any any fresh victims out here. I think we might have to call it a night of racing after this, because obviously we still got more guys left in this team that we're not going to get a chance to race. I'm just too dang lazy to go ahead and try and track more guys down. So this guy is going to do it for the night of racing. But hey, still productive. A good chunk of dough. I think we probably raised up our win combo. Our max win combo up to 13. Nice. Got some added parts. Cooling! Yes! Yes, yes, yes. And we got the uh, 300ZX Twin Turbo 2x2. Yeah! And we got a cool name. Early Falcon. There we go. That's much better. So let's make sure we pop those, those cooling bits on there. Ooh, we'll even make an extra, an extra PS and extra 0 .1 of a KGM. All about the extra one PS and tenth of a PGM or KGM. Those are the uh, critical numbers. The extra coin is just, just small. Oh, here's another guy with the, with the douche lights. See, like I said, these guys are all a bunch of douchebags. Driving Sir. And actually, this guy, if you go into his bio, his bio is he's a he's basically he thinks he's British royalty or some BS like that. And he races, but he races like a well like he's a royal royal douchebag. That's his thing. But fortunately he poses absolute threat because he sucks successfully navigated the highway off-ramp of death. And again, unfortunately, not a lot of opponents out here. Not a lot of opponents at all. Still have more guys left in this highway, highway outlaw team. Just want to beat up on your team leader because he sucks. You're all a bunch of douchebags. So you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and pop into the pit area. We join you guys when I got somebody to race. Yay! We have somebody to race. Somebody productive to race, not just a mobile ATM. We got Pride Killer. He's gonna kill our pride because he's so so amazing. But you can't stop the mismatched parts on the 180SX. It just ain't gonna happen. This will not happen. He will steamroll you. 
are not a team leader, you are not a boss, therefore you are a piece of garbage. You serve no purpose on this highway other than giving me your money, as well as getting your team leader out, because you suck. You need a real driver to take care of this problem, not just you, pride killer. Got some chase cam action here. Still do not understand how in the world people can drive and chase cam, but ooh, yeah, talked enough smack. Finally got the big boy out here. You got uh, what's his name? Spirit Crasher, and of course he's got those douchebag lights. I swear to goodness, <laughs> just getting ready for the the autopilot to put me in the divider. This will actually finish up this section of highway. Him. Drive that Mitsubishi GTO 3000 GT. I don't know, I always like to prefer calling them 3000 GTs because, hey, that's what they were sold as here in the U.S. As well as the fact that, like, when I, when I hear GTO, I think of either a Ferrari GTO or a Pontiac GTO, in which case, neither one of those is anywhere even close to the Mitsubishi GTO. It's just a lag. It does not compute. So that's going to do it for this section, and we'll go ahead and call it a night here and work on the flip side, work on the opposite loop as we unlock the new car, the GTO Twin Turbo MR. Yay! It's a boat, weighs a ton and a half, quite literally. So I'm going to go ahead and save here, and we'll get going for the next night of racing.